We are here for the first webinar. We are here for the fourth webinar and the final session of this series. WICLIS is the virtual international conference in library and information sciences organized by SLTC Research University, Padukka, Sri Lanka. With the success of the maiden conference, which was held in 2021, we are organizing this conference for the second consecutive year in collaboration with five international partners and three local partners. The international partners of this event are International Federation of Library Association and Institutions, IFLA, International Relations Office of the American Library Association, Hellenic Open University, Greece, University of Bari Aldomoro, Italy, and the Faculty of Economics and Business, University of Zagreb, Croatia. The local partners of this event are National Library Association, National Library of Sri Lanka, National Science Foundation, and the Sri Lanka Library Association. The conference will be held on the 25th of October, 2022, from 10.30 a.m. onwards, under the theme, Libraries as Drivers for Achieving Sustainable Development Goals 2030. Now, without further delay, I would like to introduce our resource person for the day, Dr. C.Z. Jaisundara. Dr. C.C. Jaisundara obtains his Doctor of Literature and Philosophy in Information Science from the University of South Africa in 2010. He has gained experience as a Deputy University Librarian at the University of Colombo and the University Librarian at the Fiji National University and the Librarian at General Sirchon Kutala Defense University. From 2007 to 2012, he worked at Sri Lanka Country Coordinator for the International Network for the Availability of Scientific Publications in the UK and has been functioning as a research article reviewer for a number of peer-reviewed journals published in the USA, South Africa, Venezuela, India and Sri Lanka. He has also functioned as co-chair of different international conferences organized by the University of Ballarat, Queensland University of Technology and the University of Colombo in 2012. He has also authored a few books and has provided many research articles and write-ups for numerous scholarly publications. So, ladies and gentlemen, it all starts with a draft manuscript, a properly edited research paper with proper references along with a good title. A short but precise abstract in the first step any research paper submission for publication in a journal goes through an editorial screening to, to start with. However, the current publishing system involves challenges with cost, where many universities are forced to cancel journal subscription for economic reasons, as well as access as scholars. And the public alike often lack access to research published in paywall subscription journals. So today, Dr. Jai Sundar is here with us to explore the topic of the publishing process of research articles, the opportunities and the challenges. Over to you, Dr. Jai Sundar, to enlighten us on this important topic. Thank you, Ishani and uh, Hasitha uh, for inviting me to you know, speak about uh, research article publication process. Um, you all welcome. Uh, I'll share my slide. Hope you all can see the slides. Yes, sir, we can see. Okay, okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to talk about journal article uh, publication process. 
um especially i mean you know this is very important for the scholars and the and, and librarians as well actually if they are especially if they are especially if they are in uh, the field of academia and how to you know how to process uh, journal articles you know how to how to publish our research uh, in prestigious journals and all so on <clears throat> i'm going to talk about the basic process and you know then some of the problems and challenges that we encounter i mean uh, for when um, publishing our research articles. Um, what are your motivations for wanting to write and publish your research work? Mm -hmm. uh, if, you had a, if you had to write something at a school or university, you might have wanted to impress your teacher with your vocabulary, imagination, mastery of material, that kind of things actually. Okay. I mean, uh, when, you are, when, you are a, I mean, when you are a writer, basically you have to you know, impress the readers. Basically you have to impress the readers. But if you are a, if you are a scholarly writer, the, if you are a general writer actually, you, know, you need to you know, impress the readers. But if you are a scholarly writer, there are two main um, objectives of your writing. The first one is you have to write to impress the readers as well as you have to write to communicate what you have found, uh, what you have discovered. So these are the two, you know, the objectives of your uh, writing, basically, if you are a scholar. So we are going to you know, concentrate mainly on uh, scholarly article writers and um, therefore, uh, so you do have two objectives to impress the readers as well as to communicate what you have found or what you have discovered. Okay. Uh, why do you need to publish? Hmm? We need to publish to claim priority for a discovery. If you have found something actually after, after conducting a research study, then you know we have to claim the priority for, the discover, for a discovery. And also to share what you have learned and how you have learned it so that others can build on the knowledge, on that knowledge. So you can share, you know, what you have found. So what you have learned. So then the others can build on that knowledge. So these are the, you know, the, I mean, two, two I mean, areas that you want to, you know, um, publish to claim priority for a discovery and also to share uh, what you have learned and how you have learned it. Okay, because that is very important. So then the other people can build on that particular knowledge. Uh, so that is the, you know, I mean, uh, that, th these are the two main reasons for public, for publishing, especially, you know, scholarly, art, uh, scholarly writers. Uh, if I'm talking, if I'm talking about, you know, something more, uh, the importance of, you know, the I mean, publication, uh, there are, you know, some reasons for it. You know, one is you know personal achievement. If somebody wants to achieve, you know, something that is that is very much personal to them, so they have to write. Okay, they will have to write. So that's a requirement. And then they can contribute to a debate or a discipline's body of knowledge. The people can contribute to the debate. Actually, the existing debate, the prevailing debate about uh, you know the certain issues about certain issues, and also the discipline discipline's body of knowledge. So the people can write. And also they can build personal profile or strengthen their curriculum vitae. For, for that person, for that purpose even, they have to write. And also uh, an expectation of your post or position. For an example, if you are an academic, acad academic member of a university or a higher education institute, then you will have to Right, you will have to publish, you have to do research and publish your research articles in prestigious journals to achieve to a certain positions like, you know, professor, senior lecturer, something like that. Actually, there's a requirement for your promotional scheme. So that's why actually you need to write and also to develop writing and communication skills. That is, uh, you know, some kind of auxiliary uh, requirement to develop your writing and communication skill and also to clarify thinking and revisit ideas and also I mean, enjoyment and intellectual challenge. Enjoyment and intellectual challenge because a lot of people, especially the people, those who are very prestigious in that particular field, do enjoy and, you know, uh, do want to face for intellectual challenge. Okay. So these are, these are the, some reasons for publishing. These are some reasons for publishing. And as I told you earlier, we have to impress the readers as well as we have to contribute 
to the to the to the discipline of body of knowledge with our findings so these are the two main objectives of writing of scholarly art, scholar, scholarly uh, researchers so what are the barriers to writing when you are talking about you know the I mean, barriers we can see uh, some reasons for barriers to writing one is fear of rejection some people are very scared of you know the writing because they they have a fear that their article or their publication will be rejected by the by journals or by journal reviewers or you know the other people so they have a fear of rejection and also fear of open criticism some people don't want to get get criticized about their work so they do have a, some kind of fear so they don't write and insecurity about the ability some people don't have you know guts they don't have uh, they don't have confidence to write because they do have you know the insecurity about their ability of writing so that is also one of the barriers hmm? one of the barriers of writing and not knowing where to start and uh, especially the people those who are in the early career stage they don't know from where to start from where to start they don't know you know i mean how to uh, how to start writing the article so do i have to you know the write it from the objective at first or do i have to you know the write at the conclusion at first or do i have to you know the write from the you know uh, uh, background of the study or the statement of the problem because they don't know where to start and how to start hmm? so these are the some of the these are some of the uh, some of the barriers to writing that we do have but some other priorities or commitments may also have some some kind of uh, some kind of you know uh, uh, some kind of you know the relationship for uh, you know uh, for for barriers to writing what are they one is you're the too busy i'm too busy and i don't have time to write or some may say on the that's on you know on the eternal back burner hmm? these are you know some of the other priorities of the commitments that we can see uh, which prevents writing writing and publishing but you know i mean if you are a scholarly writer it is very important uh, to know that there is a quality controlling process hmm? you can't publish whatever you have read you have written you can't publish whatever you have found hmm? you have to write in a very formal way a uh, very formal way and also you know then accept in in the form of a acceptable way that other peers in the particular review a particular may particular particular area of study or particular particular uh, you know uh, uh, research areas uh, would like to see your work okay so that process is be that process is called quality controlling process eh? and it is also called peer reviewed or refereed journal process Hmm? that is the country quality controlling procedure for publishing articles in peer reviewed or refereed journals okay peer reviewed or refereed journal journal is one in which manuscripts submitted by authors are reviewed by expert in that particular field of study before being accepted for publication in the journal peer reviewed or refereed journal is one in which manuscripts submitted by authors are reviewed by experts the you know uh, expert in that particular field of discipline hmm? on the topic before being accepted for publication in the journal if the if the experts are rejecting your manuscript it won't be published if the expert are if the expert are um, giving some feedback to improve your manuscript you are required to attend to those feedback before accepting for publication in the journal so this process is peer review this process is called peer reviewing process that is the quality controlling procedure of a refereed journal so that is very important for a scholarly writer it's not like you know publishing articles in uh, uh, magazines it's not like publishing articles in uh, uh, newspapers it's not like publishing articles in you know some of the formal textbooks okay 
scholarly article there are you know two kind of works scholarly articles and popular works as you already know the scholarly articles are written by expert in that particular field hmm? and they have a bibliographies of work cited hmm? we can see you know the references at the end of your paper eh? they use specialized terminology of the field they can't use you know the layman languages it's not just like you know the, i mean a lay piece of work so you have to use you know the, i mean a specialized terminology which is very much particular to the field of study that's very important and these are the you know the main three characteristics uh, that we can see in scholarly articles and popular popular works for an example magazines newspaper articles are written for general public you know the scholarly articles are written for the expert in that particular field but popular works are written for the general public so it should avoid specialized terminology of the field everybody everybody in the general public should understand what that article tries to communicate okay and it doesn't include the bibliographies at the end or references at the end and it may be written by authors who have no expertise who have no it may be written by authors who have no expertise on that particular topic too and sometime you know that we can see uh, some uh, journalists are also writing they are not you know very much experts in that particular topic so what we are going to discuss you know in this special session so we will see deciding what or when to publish and we will see how to identify a target journal and follow in the journal, how to follow the journal instructions and then how to submit the paper and then you can understand uh, what the decision making process and then how to revise the paper and answering question, queries uh, which may have uh, which may have uh, been raised by expert in that all the peer peer reviewers in that particular field or how to do reviewing or proof proofing so we are going to you know the discuss um very briefly regarding these topics in this lecture session okay deciding what or when to publish uh some factors need to be considered actually if you have a piece of work we have to you know think of the quality of the work and extent of the work and interest to the others so these are very important so you need to you know that you need to prepare a quality quality paper high quality piece of work otherwise it won't be accepted by the journal and extent of the work so how far that you have you know discovered something is it uh, you know the light uh, discovery or is it uh, you know the in depth discovery i mean are you going to you know the communicate you know very important things to the others and uh, that is also very important the extent of the work and interest to the others whether whether my piece of work will be interested whether it 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 will have you know it it can grab the interest of the others so that is also very important so if you do have you know the these three qualities of your manuscript it's easier to publish okay and what some suggestions that i would like to give you and you can seek guidance in this regard from others in your field who have more experience in publishing journal articles who have more experience in publishing journal articles you can you know the discuss with them you can have a you know a chat with them or you can you know the ask uh, them to uh, go through your manuscript and see whether your manuscript is um, uh, i mean a manuscript do have you know kind of potential to publish or present your work orally first like you know uh, in a conference eh? doing so can help in deciding whether the work is publishable and in shape in the paper and a lot of you know the researchers they uh, they present their work orally or so they they publish their work in conferences and then of course they can get you know the lot of feedback from the others and you can decide whether it is publishable it, do, it does have you know the high quality for publishing in a journal and you can shape your paper in a you know the well accepted way 
So that uh, these are, you know, I mean, two suggestions that we can give for a potential scholar. Hmm? What kind of work that you can publish? You can publish literature, literature review. You can publish empirical studies. You can publish case analysis. You can publish, you know, theoretical analysis or the book review, literature review and empirical studies, case analysis and theoretical analysis or the book review or that kind of things can be easily publishable. Okay. How do we identify a target journal? Okay, decide early before drafting the paper. You can identify a target journal, target journal before drafting the paper. Once you have, you know, conducted or once you have, you know, prepared, once you have um, uh, carried out a research study, then of course, before writing the paper, you, can, you have to identify a target journal. You can identify a target journal. Do not write the paper, then look for a journal. So that is not, I mean, uh, easy. First, you know, I mean, you do have, you know, I mean, uh, your work, okay? But before writing, before converting your work into a paper, you can decide early what journal that you are, that I am going to identify, that I am going to, you know, publish my piece of work. That's important. Look for journals that have published works similar to yours. You can you can look for other journals which have been published similar work. And consider the journal that have published work that you will cite. Mm? Consider the journal that have published work that you will cite. Okay, similar scope, citing high impact articles eh? uh, published in the journals, that kind of things, you know, can be considered when we are identifying a target journal for publishing. And also cons consider the journal's content area and culture. Mm? When you are if you, when you are going through the journal, you can see the mission statement, mission statement for topics, goals, you know, policy and audience in the journal. Each and every journal do have mission statement for topics, and also they have goals, they have policies, they have you know the very clearly declared the audience that kind of things. Then of course you can get an idea about what journal shoots for you for your work. Get acquainted with the journal's format for articles, subject matter, methodological rigor, etc. Hmm? You can, you know, go through the format and you can go through the articles and you can, you know, I mean, compare your article, your manuscript and the articles published in that, you know, particular journal to check, hmm? to check hmm, whether your, journal, your manuscript is suitable for that particular journal. And also see who is or not, who is on the editorial board and their credentials? Do we have, you know, the good editors? Uh, do they have, you know, the good credential affiliations? You know, uh, are they are they from academia or are they from, you know, research organization or are they, you know, the useless people or the nonsense, you know, the dead roots? You have to see their credentials. Okay, uh, publish and uh, and also you can, you know, I mean, uh, see whether you can publish in several languages. Uh, with editor's permission. If you can publish in English, uh, I mean, if editor permits, you can publish it in your own language too. So you can see these kind of things. And they are, you know, we do call that, you know, the journal content area and the culture. So we have to get, we have to go through the journal content area and the culture to get an understanding of what the journal is. And we, that journal, journal shoots for your manuscript. And consider your chances of being accepted. Uh, you, you can, you know, the ask about the acceptance rate. Hmm? Because I mean, some of the journals, they have mentioned in, here, in, in their journal as well as the website, I mean, uh, their normal acceptance rate is this, 10%, hmm? 15%. Uh, okay. If, um, for an example, if they are saying, if they say that their acceptance rate is uh, 30%, that means, you know, uh, that means 70% um, articles are rejected because the acceptance rate is, you know, 30% because many people are, you know, sending, but all are not accepted. Only the very high quality uh, articles are accepted. That is, you know, basically 30% out of all. Okay. Uh, but many journals don't know about the acceptance rates and, and they don't want to, you know, communicate with the others too. 
Hmm? Acceptance basically depend on uh, depend on quality and style of the article and administrative resources of the journal. That means, you know, I mean, um, uh, because our articles cannot be published, you know, as it is. So we have, they have to, you know, go through, I mean, um, peer reviewing process, they have to go through, you know, editing process, they have to do go through, you know, the uh, copy editing or proofreading process, you know, they do have a lot of, you know, administrative work behind the screen and acceptance basically depend on the quality style of the article as well as their resources, uh, their resources available with the journal, okay? And also language of the journal. If the language is Spanish or you know Italian, it's easier to publish. But if it is in English, if it is an international journal, it's difficult because you know I mean a lot of journal articles are in the form in English medium in in, in the in yeah in the form of you know the English medium uh, uh, submissions. So uh, the acceptance rates will be less, and number of issues in a year. Some uh, some journals they have only you know four issues four four volumes a year sorry four issues a year one okay uh, that means you know they would cut and some journals they have you know I mean twelve issues a year so each and every month they produce one journal so if we do have a large number of you know uh, issues a year then of course it's easier to publish because the acceptance rate will be high. And the number of articles in an issue. Some journals, they have, I mean, a very limited number of articles. But some journals, especially the online journals, they have a large number of articles and then in an issue. So if we can you know, find journals with a large number of articles in an issue, then of course your acceptance, their acceptance rates, rate is high. And reviewers and their credentials also you know the important for acceptance you know if they are you know the very highly qualified you know the highly credit i mean um, uh, accredited people they are so you know uh, less chance of being accepted okay so we have to you know the, i mean think of the acceptance rates acceptance rates very importantly and uh, these uh, you know some of the factors that may have a kind of effect for acceptance and consider, but do not be fooled by the journal impact factor, okay? Journal impact factor is determined by the frequency at which article, uh, articles in that journal were cited, okay? But, uh, but there are, you know, a lot of drawbacks of journal impact factors, but however, still a lot of, you know, the, I mean, um, uh, researchers, you know, a lot of organizations, they do give priority for high impact journals high impact phenomenal that is you know even though there are a lot of you know the, i mean problems of the impact impact factor especially people would like to you know acquire the journals the read the journals or read the journal articles published in high impact journals okay so that is i mean you need to you know keep in your mind if we can you know have high impact journal if you can publish in a high impact journal then you know the, the we will get more prestige for our work and also non-English journals are at a disadvantage because in fact all, I mean, a majority of the journals, so they are non-English journals. Sorry, no, they are English journals. Non-English journals will do have, we will have a greater disadvantage because, you know, they don't um, have impact factors. Number of databases indexed in the journal will determine who sees abstract of articles, okay? And impact factor, so they ca it calculates uh, number of citations divided by total number of articles calculated for calculated over the last two years. So this is how they have you know calculated the impact factor. But uh, the, it looks simple, but it's not simple actually. Uh, especially the you know the web of science articles, they have very high impact factor factors. Okay, formerly it was called you know ISI journal or the Thomson Reuters journals. Now, I mean, it's called Web, Web of Science. Um, and it has, you know, three main collections, uh, Social Science Citation Index, um, uh, three main, you know, uh, indexes, indexes, 
So, so science citation index, science citation index, as an event is citation index. You know, the, 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 ind the, the journals index in these three prestigious citation indexes are still recognized you know, highly. Hmm? And also you can see, you know, Simago journal ranking and Saimago journal ranking, Saimago journal ranking and also you know, the Scopus. Hmm? And also the because Saimago general ranking is based on Scopus. And if you can, you know, I mean, go through the Scopus or Saimago journal ranking and see what are the available journals there. Uh, there are more than, you know, 20,000 journals available in Scopus and also Saimago journal ranking. And uh, you can find out, you know, I mean, the best um, journals <clears throat> uh, in your field of study. For an example, I mean, if you go, if you can go to the Saimago websites, you can select your area of study and your, the, you know, the broad area and you are in a specific area and the journals available. And you can see, you know, the, I mean, uh, the, 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 the very prestigious journals in quarter one, Q1, and then Q2 and Q3 and Q4. So you can select, you know, I mean, um, uh, anyone, anyone, you know, from, uh, from these uh, I mean, uh, quarters or the queues, and uh, you can decide, you know, I mean, whether you want to publish your manuscript in that particular journal. Okay. But Q1, uh, Q1, um, the journals in Q1 is, you know, very highly prestigious. So it's difficult to publish. But Q2 is a little bit difficult, like that, you know, I mean, uh, until, you know, the Q, Q3. You can select, you know, I mean, a good uh, journals. There are many reasons to identify a target journal before you start writing your paper. Try selecting the correct options I have given here. You will know whether your paper fits within the journal scope. Okay. You will know whether your paper fits within the journal scope. You can inform the journal's editor that you intend to write a paper for the journal. You can just, you know, simply send an email to the journal editor that you intend to write a paper on this particular topic. Okay. And you can ask, I mean, whether it is publishable, whether it is, you know, acceptable before, before, before writing. You can refer the journal's instructions while you write your paper. Okay. While you write your paper, you can, you know, see the journal's instructions. And you can make sure you adhere to the length of word count specifications, length of word count specification given by the journal. And also, I mean, uh, the libraries do have rich periodical directory and you can browse or you can search uh, the journals uh, which have been registered in rich periodical directory and those journals can be accessed and you can you know, send your manuscript to uh, 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 any selected journal uh, which have been listed in Ulrich Periodicals directory. Or you can go to Australian Research Council, ARC. They have compiled uh, a list of, you know, very prestigious uh, uh, journals in different fields. You can find those, you know, the journals from Australian Research Council and decide, you know, the, which journal which journal shoots for your piece of work for your manuscript and when you are writing i mean when you are when you are when you are trying to uh, target a journal for your publication please go through the predatory journals you know potential predatory journals and publishers which have been compiled by i mean uh, bills bills okay bills predatory journals and publishers and it's very important to see whether that selected journal is available in this predatory journal list so if it is available in the, this predatory, potential predatory journal list, you should not you know, the publish your article there. Then of course, I mean, if, if, if you do publish your piece of work in a predatory journal, it won't get you know, any prestigious. The majority of the, you know, the journals which have been screened by a, a, a panel of experts have been listed here, uh, which, are, uh, which are not suitable for uh, publishing, okay? So Beals predatory uh, journals and publishers should be identified and uh, you should not try to publish your manuscript in any journal listed out there. Okay. 
for an example you know if you want you know publish um, if you want to you know publish uh, uh, an article uh, in a, in a journal okay published by the institute of language and communication studies that has been listed as a predatory publisher okay they have you know the many research many research journals yeah? for an example asia pacific journal of research asian journal of applied science and engineering asian journal of chemistry so all these journals which comes under that which come under that you know particular predatory publisher are considered as predatory journals so you are not you should not write your i mean high quality research papers in these zombie journals okay you need to be very very careful uh then you know there's another database called kebels database the kebels database do have whitelist and blacklist so all the all the journals listed in the white list are considered good journals all the journals listed in blacklist are considered predatory journals so you should be very careful when you are selecting a target journal that journal should be listed in the white journal list not in the black uh, black black list okay white list is considered good but not the black list okay but only the drawback what i can see over here kebels you have to subscribe you will have to you know spend money to get access to kebels okay but all the others are other all the others can be accessed free of charge and also you can review the reference list and bibliographies of you know the other similar work and see you know the good uh, uh, good uh, journals that they have cited that they have you know the they have uh, used to uh, prepare the references of bibliographies okay for an example japan and ancient western classic the role of divine intervention in greek roman and japanese literature that is you know one of the articles suppose that i have written it okay uh, so the journal uh, okay the, the 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 journals what i have consulted for writing that particular one is you know can be list, can be seen in the reference list okay for an example uh, this the angry poet you know the first one and the second one is epic of history and the, and like that actually so you can and you can see the journals listed out there yale classical studies poets and critics of the classical tradition so if you do have something similar to my work you can also you know the explore that yale classic classical studies journal that's good and poets and critics of the classical uh, the classical tradition so you can you know i mean go through the others reference list or the bibliographies to see whether your work suits for them and whether you can find a you know prestigious journal for your work too okay and consider these practical aspects how long to get the article peer review because some um, some journals have a very long peer review process okay so if you have you know the sent your publication sent your article to a journal it takes you know some time one year almost okay one year almost so we should avoid that kind of things but in the meantime with a caution you know i mean i want to say you that majority of the predatory publishers they have a very short peer review process it's not just a peer review it's just you know doing you know i mean uh, it's just you know i mean uh, to showing off that they are doing peer review so they do peer reviewing in one week but no feedback is given okay we have to be very careful for the journals do have very short time span for peer reviewing process but also we have to consider the journals which takes you know a very long process of peer reviewing and how long between accepted the acceptance and publication Mm -hmm. and sometimes the people some journal takes you know the very long time for acceptance for publication okay they accepted in 2021 but they publish in 2023 that is also you know the not good okay and geographical distribution mm -hmm. whether it is you know mainly focused on asia whether it is mainly focused on oceania that geographical distribution is important and special audiences and how much editorial support does it give whether they are doing proofreading free of charge 
or whether you know they are supporting us for proofreading that kind of things you know what kind of editorial support does it give we have to consider and um, you can take the advantage of the choices available to publish your work okay that we call it the matthew effect eminent scientists get disproportionately great credit for their contribution that means you know that the matthew effect is the rich get richer and poor get poorer so if we can find a uh, you know a very prestigious um, researcher who has you know a large number of publication in that particular field if you want to collaborate with him or her if you want you know to publish your work with the, him it's very easier to publish in a very prestigious journals because journal do have you know a kind of uh, soft corner towards the uh, towards those you know prestigious pub, may, researchers so it's very easy the study reports that one study reports that the citations of paper increases by 12% above the expected level when their authors are awarded prestigious investigator status hmm? at the uh, howard uh, hux medical institution a major private research organization okay that means you know i mean if you can collaborate your work if you can collaborate your, you know if you can you know do your research with um, a prestigious researchers in the particular field it is easier to publish okay and it it is you know it is more prone to uh, get uh, cited by you know the other uh, scholars and criteria used by the editors the basically the the editors decide whether it is acceptable or not okay when the manuscript comes to the editor they decide or oh, whether this suits for our journal or not okay that is you know the, i mean uh, good or bad only two options there okay and writing how do we writing actually so we have to establish the mindset attitudes for writing okay if you don't have you know the attitude to write it's difficult and also you should know about the ethics and uh, research ethics and write publication ethics and all and preparing to write and doing the writing and revising your work is also very important okay even though you are doing writing if you don't you know read it again and again and again and you know the do revisions properly it won't be publishable okay establishing the mindset remember that you are writing to communicate not to impress okay main thing is you know writing to communicate but impress we need to impress too actually but not purely on impression impressions Hmm? what we have to do we need to you know the gram we need to communicate with the others we have to realize that those reading your work want you to do well okay journal editors peer reviewers professors hmm? the purpose of their constructive criticism is to help you succeed but not for you know the, i mean getting revenge from your end they give you know the, i mean a lot of constructive criticism for your uh, of your for your work for for the purpose of improving your work into a certain standard okay knowing ethics you know the you need to you know the, i mean do you need to be very careful about the authenticity should not do fabrications and the accuracy accuracy you have to you know provide complete data avoiding you know inappropriate manipulation of images and also you know you have to you know the appropriate statistical i mean appropriate you have to use appropriate statistical procedures so these are you know the ethics that you need to you know and also the originality not publishing the same finding you know in different different you know uh, journals eh? not submitting the same manuscript to two three journals at once eh? so you you are not supposed to you know i mean send your manuscript to two three journals at once okay only uh, on the the articles manuscript should be directed only to a only to one journal at a time if it rejects then only you know the I mean you can do some improvements and send it to another one not dividing one small research project into many tiny papers you know a lot of people uh, once they have completed their phd they publish you know the many articles from their piece of work many articles from their phd 
maybe sometime you know the I mean, uh, 15 20 articles so we call salami science or cucumber science for that kind of things so you're not supposed to do so and also credit you need to you know the, i mean uh, cite sources you know the, i mean um, acknowledge the others i mean uh, you can't say others work as your own eh? these are the ethics an ethical treatment on humans and animals if you have used eh? disclosure of your uh, conflict of interest, uh, financial in financial um, conflicts and other conflicts. I mean, for an example, I mean, some of the pharmaceutical research are being sponsored by some pharmaceutical sponsors. Uh, so then you have your findings may be a little bit biased, maybe you know, the entirely biased sometimes to the sponsor. So we have to you know, disclose all these conflict of interest, you know, uh, properly. And you can find a resource on ethics from this link. Uh, so it gives you know I mean, a very good idea about the ethics, uh, what you have to consider when you are preparing papers. And preparing to write, you can publish uh, items as models, use some published items as models. Some you know, the journal articles can be used as models. And obtain and review instructions. Uh, Sometimes you can consult style manuals like American Chemical Society, AIM, American Medical Association Manual Style, Scientific Style and Format, APA Style, okay? That kind of things you can consult when you're writing. And do a lot of pre-writing. For example, stack papers in order. In the order you plan to cite them. List point you want to make, perhaps make an outline. A lot of, you know, do a lot of pre-writing before you're know, writing a formal paper. There are no way of writing well and also of writing easily, okay? There are no way of writing uh, well and also of writing easily. Anthony Thrall says like that actually, you know, I mean, you can write, you know, uh, from anywhere if you are comfortable with. Doing the writing, schedule specific time to write, start with whatever part you find easiest, okay? Don't interrupt your writing to search for small details. You can write, you know, I mean, uh, whatever, whatever you want to write, but keep, you know, I mean, uh, small spaces. If you don't know something small, I mean, some small details, keep spaces for that. You know, I mean, after that, you can find them, you know, fill the gaps, fill those gaps. Okay. Start with whatever part you find easiest. Okay. Uh, for an example, if you find that methodology part is easier, you can start it from the methodology first. Or if you find that uh, uh, the statement of the problem is easier, you can start it from the state of the problem. Okay, realize that often in writing, there is no one right way, but rather a series of problem with more than one solution. Okay, revising your work. That is very, very important. You have to you know, read it again and read it again and read it again and revise your work. And good writing is largely a matter of good revising. That's very important. First, revise your writing yourself. Okay. Then get feedback from the others and revise more. First, you know, you can go through your work by yourself and you can correct them. And after that, give it to uh, the others and get others' feedback and incorporate all these feedback. And now, first, you know, the, we need to you know, critically analyze the feedback, what the others have given. And if they are, you know, good, Incorporate, incorporate all these feedback into your manuscript, manuscript for revising purpose. And consider having an editor help, okay? Lot of, you know, I mean, uh, people, especially, I mean, um, the people, those who are in uh, non-English speaking countries, they have to, you know, I mean, uh, they have to ha hire a editor, English editor, to make your work more proficient, okay? More, more, I mean, professional. Okay, avoid the temptation to keep revising your writing forever. Revise the abstract extensively. That is very important, especially the abstract. Cons questions to consider in revising. Does the manuscript contain everything it should? Hmm? So we have to think, does it contain anything it should not? Is all the information accurate? Is the content consistent throughout? 
is everything logically organized is everything clearly worded okay once you have you know revised everything you can get a piece of work piece of paper which indicates these you know six questions and you know i mean if you feel that the manuscript contain everything is should just you know click it off just you know i mean uh, tick it off and if you feel that it contain every, anything it shouldn't tick it off if you feel that all information information is accurate tick it off like that actually so you have to you can get a, you know a kind of checklist and see whether all these questions are fulfilled okay and now what, what are other things are points stated briefly simply and directly in other words is everything concise not in a, you know the very i mean long way of writing so everything should be precisely presented should be very briefly simply and directly presented eh? concise our grammar spelling punctuation and word use correct throughout okay you can use some software called grammarly eh? it can be accessed you know free of charge even if you want you know the advanced feature uh, you can get the premium by paying a small amount but it's very important that your work is you know the grammatically correct that your work do not have any syntax errors that can be you know the checked very easily from some software which can be freely accessed like grammarly are all figures and tables well designed does the manuscript comply does the manuscript comply with the instructions okay and when you are writing when you are writing uh, you can use uh, the imrad format that is the you know prescribed format for uh, writing scientific papers the first one is introduction then the method results and discussion and but the best thing is you can you know i mean uh, uh, read the instructions given by the journal but majority of the journal gives this i mean you know structure for your work publishing paper i mean how do you publish it first you need to submit the paper then you will have to you know uh, wait for the journal's decision process and then you can revise the paper and after that the final step to be completed Sub submitting a paper basically we can do by mail or the that is called su traditional submission but some journals they don't accept traditional submission they accept only electronic submission that is either from email either as an email attachment or via the journal's web page okay and when you are submitting it is very important to include a cover letter a cover letter and also a uh, completion of the required forms for an example um conflict of interest forms you know copyright transfer forms and that kind of things so these are very important you can do electronic submission via email, as an email attachment or via a journal websites but you need to you know the, i mean uh, strictly adhere to the instructions given by the journal and include a cover letter what you have done and why you are why you want you know publish it in that particular journal why it shoots for it and you need to complete the all required forms like copyright transfer forms conflict of interest forms that kind of things and cover letter basically contain title and the author of the paper and type of the submission fact that paper is new and not been submitted elsewhere sometime we have to you know write where our paper has been potentially presented orally why the paper is important some possible peer reviewers sometime you know they ask him possible reviewers river may uh, peer reviewers too uh and when you are when you are sending your manuscripts to editors or the journals there are some categories of the editors that journals can be seen okay the, what are they who are they editor in chief sometimes associate editors etc concerned mainly with the content editor in chief and managing editors concerned mainly with the administration administration of the journal and the manuscript editors 
improve the writing and maintain a consistent style okay and initial screening by the journal so when it goes to the manuscript editor or the editor in chief they initially screen your manuscript and decide whether your article is appropriate for the subject matter in the journal or whether it comply comply with the instructions given by the journal whether it is uh, overall quality is high okay that is the initial initial screening then they decide the managing editor decide that is your your work is journal worthy journal worthy if the if the journal if if they decide your piece of work is journal worthy then they send uh, send your manuscripts to possible peer reviewers to assess whether your work is in high quality whether your work is good for their whether you are whether you have found something new and something important to the audience okay and the significance or potential significance of the of the work so that is called the peer reviewing process that is the evaluation by expert in that particular field so they help the editor to decide editor decide whether to publish the paper to help authors to improve the paper whether or not the journal accept it okay so no matter whether the journal accept it they give us you know feedbacks to improve our manuscript and then the editor once the evaluation you know uh, once the peer reviewers um, uh, comments are given and all these you know the comments are being you know forwarded to the uh, manuscript owner and ask them to you know, revise the manuscript according to the feedback given and after that it goes back to the editors or, or, or the peer reviewers or the editors and they decide whether the journal is accepted whether the article is accepted or not so the pen peer reviewers basically <clears throat> select one option whether the journal is accepted as it is sorry whether the manuscript is accept whether manuscript can be accepted as it is whether manuscript can be accepted if the if it suitably revised whether uh, uh whether whether the manuscript is rejected whether the manuscript should be rejected okay uh actually you know the, i mean if we do if you get you know the rejection letters that you know the uh, indicating that your manuscript doesn't you know i mean fulfill our requirements so it's not in the quality that we expect something on the basically you know the, i mean as uh, writers we first you know um, get fit tears hmm? then we we'll get angry okay that is not suitable actually peer reviewers are giving only the feedback to improve our piece of work okay do not treat unnecessarily over rejection revise and submit elsewhere in incorporating suggestions from the past reviewers okay rather than you know them getting angry and uh, you have to you know the do uh, the revising you have to you know the do revising and resubmitting the paper elsewhere incorporating the suggestions from the past reviewers that is important okay okay revising a paper and you need to revise and resubmit properly and the promptly okay indicate what revisions were made you have to indicate what revisions were made that is very important a lot of people do revisions but they don't indicate so if you have you know the revised you have to indicate it in you know sometime you know you can color the wordings or you can you know highlight the wordings you know? and or otherwise you can you know the use track changes in um, and microsoft of my, my word okay and uh, when you are revising the manuscript in response to write a um, reviewer's comment okay uh, the 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 main goal is to improve the paper and get it accepted for the publication and if additional experiments are required make sure they directly address the reviewer's specific criticisms okay when you are writing when you are when you are when you, when you, once you have revised your paper 
prepare a rebuttal rebuttal in the sense you know the letter of you know another letter uh, to submit to the manuscript edit um, reviewers you know i mean what you have done that is the, that is called the rebuttal and uh, that is very important and uh, in the rebuttal you can write i mean um, if you have accepted that uh, reviewers comments okay i have done it i have completed the may i have completed according to feedback given or otherwise you can write i don't accept i mean your comments because of these reasons like that rebuttal should be very com you know very comprehensive and it should the company the if the manuscript should accompany the rebuttal then the editors will you know resubmit the rebuttal with your manuscript to the reviewers again for determining whether you have properly incorporated the feedback or otherwise the editor decide whether you have properly incorporated the feedback given by the given by peer reviewers okay uh okay these are the main thing that i want to you know the communicate when we are you know writing papers and uh, once you have um, completed all these you know the revisions according to the feedback given by the reviewers and once you have you know prepared the rebuttal and it goes to the editor and editor decide whether you have properly incorporated the feedback or whether you have you know rejected some feedback given by the edit um, given by you know peer reviewers with proper and justifiable reasons okay then you know the if he satisfied if he satisfies with your work then it is accepted then you will be notified that your work is accepted and it will be published in this particular volume and issue okay and uh, if you want you know i mean go through all these you know i mean important things you can visit author aid a uh, website at international network for the availability of scientific publications so it, it has you know i mean many important um, uh, instructions and briefings given for possible and potential scholarly writers okay and i must thank you know the professor barbara castel for allowing me to use uh, you know points uh, regarding publication process okay thank you any questions do you have so if you have any questions just i mean direct me Uh, thank you uh, so much, Dr. Chaisundar. I think we have a few questions. So uh, may I represent them to you one by one? Yeah. Yes. So I think uh, there's a, there's a question uh, they're asking. How do we know that a journal is predatory? That is the question. Uh, the basically, as I told, as I you know, I mean, uh, uh, mentioned earlier. There are some um, websites called Beals Predatory Journals and Publishers. So we can go through the you know the journals listed out there to see whether the journal, the target journals that we have selected, is predatory or not. In addition to that, there is a Cabell's list. They have uh, they have blacklist. That blacklist indicates predatory journals. And if you can't, you know, I mean, find out, you know, I mean, any journals, but you may suspect that a that a, that a, that a, a particular journal is predatory. We can go through its characteristics. For an example, uh, we can see whether it is published by a prestigious organization or a or a professional body. Okay, if it is published by a, you know, the, I mean, uh, unknown, I mean. Uh, organization i mean normally the re, it doesn't have a recognition and also you can you know the, go through the uh, publication process pu publication you know, public pu publication instructions and check whether they are asking uh, publication charges 
publication charges in the sense actually a lot of you know good journals are also asking publication charges but majority of the predatory journals they are asking very low amount of publication charges like you know i mean 100 dollars 150 dollars like that but all good journals normally they ask 2000 us dollars for publication as publication charges like that and also you can go through the articles which have already been published and see whether they are in whether they are you know whether they do have you know grammatical mistakes whether they have you know i mean uh, formatting mistakes syntax errors that kind of things but gold prestigious journals you know the renowned journals they don't have that kind of drawbacks and also um uh when you are when, i mean uh, when you are going through the uh when you are going through the um, the editors and the peer reviewers or the editorial panel we can find lot of you know useless people are there and their institutions are also not recognized and their email addresses also contain very you know very much public email addresses but not do have you know any affiliation affiliations to particular you know prestigious organization for an example majority of the editors do have gmails or yahoo accounts or you know something else like that but it doesn't you know the uh, it doesn't indicate the organizational email addresses where they are affiliated to so there are you know i mean uh, some criteria which can be you know found from the web even there are many criteria that may have that may used to assess to determine whether our public whether our journal is predatory or not and the ugc university grant commission is currently considering to you know prepare a, to prepare a, a circular uh, which indicates uh, the characteristic of predatory publishers and predatory uh, journals so you can use it you know i mean in the very near future thank you dr jayasundar that's very descriptive and um, we have another question another participant wants to know whether there are special journals uh, where one can publish articles free of charge especially uh, with regard to library uh, information sciences yeah there are many uh, journals so uh, uh, if you, when you, if you can you know i mean if you can go to um, saimago saimago ranking or scopus you can find there are many you know the many journals uh, published in library information science field uh, i mean uh, are not charging any single penny from your end you can publish free of charge many many article many many journals are there but in addition to that um, okay in addition to that um, what i have to what i have to say you i mean particularly over here Uh, but many of the journal, many of the publication listed out, you know, I mean, available in um, uh, in the internet on the internet are uh, sometimes we feel that they are predatory. The best thing what you can do is you just you know go to Saimago website or Scopus website and see. i mean whether any target journal is there for your particular field of study but all the journal listed in uh, saimago ranking as well as in scopus are very prestigious journals uh, we are that you don't need to you know i mean uh, worry about its you know quality so that's why i mean we are recommending uh, potential scholars or uh, the potential writers or potential publishers to go through the journal listed in saimago index or scopus so you can find you know thousands of journals uh, which do not uh, require any single penny from your end for publishing your manuscripts thank you doctor i will read out the next and the final question to you how do one write ethical statement for your manuscript especially if your institution does not have an irb uh this participant is uh, you know really expecting an answer because uh, it says uh, that seems to be an issue with why 
a q1 journal rejected my manuscript but it was a very good manuscript yeah that's a big problem especially the countries like us some of the institutions research organizations including universities they don't have ethical boards so that is you know the one of the reasons for rejection of very good articles in very prestigious journals but you know i mean a, a lot of a lot of journals they are very much particular about this um, ethical standards that's a, you know a big question where even i don't have you know i mean a good answer for that particular question uh, but only thing is you know we can write them to the editor that we don't have a board but we have used these measures to you know protect the ethical um independence something like that actually but you know uh, but there is no other way of you know the, uh, justifying them uh, that it doesn't violate ethical standards of the journal that's a big question for especially for the institutions in uh, developing world sorry about that okay uh, with that we have now come to the end of q and a of the session all right i think it's time for us to wrap up it was indeed a fabulous knowledge sharing platform and dr jay sundara i'm sure our participants learned so much from you and i as an academic personally learned so much from you thank you so much so ladies and gentlemen this great personality who enlightened all of us today is the librarian of the university of kalania dr c c jay sundara Thank you once again, Dr. Jaya Sundara, for your time, knowledge, and more than anything, for accepting our invitation as a valuable resource person of the WikiLeaks 2022. Thank now, you. Now uh, I have uh, yes, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak about this. May I thank you, Hasita, and all. Right now, I have a special announcement for authors and presenters. we invite the participants to join us on the 25th for the conference as we now have sent out the notifications on accepted abstracts of wiklix 2022 and the ones who have been asked to resubmit with corrections please do so and send them on no before the due date given by the wiklix 2022 committee my dear participants guidelines for the recorded presentations will be sent to you in due course and also the recorded session as many of you all requested the recorded session of this webinar will be uploaded soon for your reference so thank you everyone for attending this session today with wiklist 2022 we wish you a good day all right take care everyone stay safe